Oh my God, the most heated topic of astrology since the last 25 years, in India at least. <laughs> Can a Manglik marry a non-Manglik? What is Manglik? What is non-Manglik? Is there anything like semi-Manglik, uh, super-Manglik, downgraded Manglik? You know, all the FAQs related to Manglik, non-Manglik. <laughs> All right, so we'll see four situations like when two Mangliks are married, or when one Manglik is married to another non Manglik, and, and the third situation is, of course, uh, both are non Mangliks. Okay, so not for three situations. Okay, <clears throat> so what, what exactly does it mean to be Manglik? You know, like, uh, of course, we know the technical astrological things, right. In different parts of India, there is different considerations for this. So, for example, uh, in general, what is considered is if Mars is in the 1st, 2nd, 4th, 7th, 8th and 12th. Six houses. <laughs> in these six houses, if Mars is placed from the Ascendant, then a person is considered to be Mangli. And... Uh, in the other case, if Mars is in other houses apart from this, then uh, yeah, Mars is like non. Uh, you you are like non mangli Okay, you are normal. <laughs> normal means non mangli Okay, mangli means uh, not normal. Not that you are abnormal, but it's not normal. You are like a special case. Okay, but then uh, what is mangli basically? Mangli uh, actually means that Mars has the power to impact your marital houses okay which are marital houses we have the uh, second house the seventh house primarily these two houses and also the eleventh house is considered but primarily second and seventh are houses of marriage so if mars is in the first he's aspecting your seventh house mm -hmm. then if mars is in second he's situated in the second from if mars is in fourth he's aspecting your uh, seventh house with the fourth aspect then if Mars is in 7th, he's in 7th. And from the 12th, he's uh, for, for, from the 8th eight, eight house, uh, he's aspecting the 2nd house, okay? And 8th house is also the house of your in-laws. And from the 12th, with the 8th aspect, he aspects your 7th house. So either ways, with these 6 houses, uh, somehow either he's situated or aspecting the marriage houses 2nd and 7th. So this means the power of Mars is a bit higher. When it comes to marriage okay so he has more power to influence your married life and as we know mars is the character for the sixth house which is you know uh, enemies you know anger frustration passion and uh, yeah violence sometimes so sixth is the twelfth to the seventh so mangal in a bad these are all bad qualities of mars okay and in good in terms of good qualities mars represents your uh Ability to be very assertive, very determined, uh, fearless, you know, to go after the truth, to maintain your uh, celibacy, to preserve your semen and uh, yeah, to fight for what you believe is right. Okay, so these are uh, good and bad traits of Mars. Now for marriage, uh, somehow both the good and bad traits of Mars can be a bit challenging. So for example, if a person is too assertive, okay, uh, yeah, it's not bad, but uh, in marriage, sometimes that can cause some rifts because you are too direct, you are, yeah, apparently you are not very considerate about your spouse. On the other hand, if you are not assertive at all, then you get abused by your spouse or your in-laws, right? So both the traits, if they are in extremes, uh, they are not good. So that will depend on the uh, placement of Mars, which will tell you which trait of Mars is coming out, okay? But nonetheless, any extreme trait of Mars is not uh, very good for marriage, okay? Not that it will cause a divorce, but uh, yeah, it can create some uh, harsh feelings, okay? Uh, so that, that that's the problem with Mars because at the end, he represents our ability to remain single, okay, which is Brahmacharya. So that is why that's where the debate settles at the end. And then we have non-Mangliks, okay. Non-Mangliks are people who do not have, who, in whose charts, you know, Mars is behaving like a normal planet, which means Mars is there in the chart, 
but he does not, he's not directly influencing your married life. So that means your Martian traits will not come out directly in specifically in your marriage. But for Hmong leaks, the Martian traits, as I said, in good or bad, will come out more prominently for marriage because it is impacting the marriage houses. Okay. But what is very important to understand is that you cannot just put a black and white situation to this, okay? And as usual, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe, like, and please comment. Let me know in the, down in the comments, you know, if you are Manglik and if you are married, how's your married life? Is your spouse Manglik or non-Manglik, whatever, which of the three or both of you are Manglik, both of you are non-Mangliks, okay? So... Now, please let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up at the end and watch my other videos on Mars. I hope I made some videos in the last six years for Mangli. Okay. And yes, if you want a consultation, you will find my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you even if you are a Mangli and your spouse is not. <laughs> all right. So now what, what is the biggest blunder when we do uh, that we do when we are discussing Mangli is we think Mars is all that matters. There is no other planet that matters. Now, of course, Mangli is very important. Mangli, non-Mangli is very important. I'm not denouncing it. But what I'm trying to tell you is that the, the influence of Mars that is there on married life. Okay, so this is like your marriage. This is Mars. Mars is hammering. <laughs> your marriage is disappearing. This does not just depend on your Mars. This also depends on the other planets. Okay. So let me give you some scenarios where the Mangal Dosh can be aggravated. Okay. Mangal Dosh can be aggravated if your Mars is uh, in a fire sign. Which means the good traits of Mars will be aggravated. Which is again a problem as I said. And also if Mars is in a water sign, then also it may be aggravated because the bad qualities of Mars will be aggravated. Okay, so either ways, if you are a Manglik with a debilitated or an exalted Mars, there could be a problem. Okay, <clears throat> But now what you need to understand is, if in the horoscope, along with the Manglik Mars, which means Mars is you know, impacting these houses, you have some other placements which are pushing Mars to go further in that direction. Then there is a serious problem. Otherwise, not very much. So, for example, if in a chart, Jupiter is aspecting Mars, then the person is having a bit more consideration. Otherwise, the person is very, the person goes into extremes. And what I have seen in my experience, even if Jupiter is not aspecting Mars or Jupiter Mars are not conjunct, Jupiter Mars are not in Parivartan, even in the ninth lord of your Lagna chart, so whichever is your ascendant, look at the ninth lord, even if the ninth lord is conjunct Mars or is aspecting Mars, even then uh, you can see that there is some consideration in the person. So that means. If you have Mars affecting these houses, which means if you are a Mangli and your Jupiter or ninth lord is connected to Mars via conjunction, parivartan or aspect, then the Mangli dosha reduces significantly, which means you are assertive or you are, uh, as I said, you know, the extreme, you are not very assertive, not at all assertive, you can't take a stand. But if Jupiter is aspecting, there is some balance in that. Because Jupiter represents guidance. So it's not magical. It means, you know, if a person is Manglik and Jupiter is aspecting Mars, if somebody who is more knowledgeable and senior instructs them or guides them, then they are able to listen. So people who have, you know, Jupiter aspecting Mars, they are like, oh, my Manglik dosh is cancelled, right? No, it's not cancelled. You were Manglik by default. But if you hear good advice from others, then there is a possibility that you may change. And I've seen that people uh, change sometimes. Okay. <clears throat> so this is a situation where the Manglik dosha has reduced. Now, what are situations where the Manglik dosha is aggravated? 
okay so this is this is like when other agni tattva planets are linked with the ascendant or ascendant lord you know like 10th house first house like if you have ketu in the first house if you have surya in the first house or ketu sun in the 10th house then it's like yes i am the boss everybody has to listen to what i am saying then then the dosha is aggravated right it could be either on a good sense or on a bad sense okay as i said before the good qualities or bad qualities one of them will be aggravated so along with that if you are manglik on top of that then uh, it is more troublesome because especially if surya is in the 10th or in the first or could be with k2 also then also it is problematic then there's another situation where this dosha can be aggravated where if sun and mars sun mars k2 are together in the horoscope so for example you are manglik you have mars in second house and sun k2 are together somewhere okay they are in third house fourth house fifth house sixth house then also this can be a problem and added to that if they are in the lagna or in the 10th so if your mangal is in second and surya ketu is conjunct in the second or 10th wow that's like an extreme situation and adding more fire to it if mars is also somewhere like you know mars is also with uh, like you know mars is in the fourth house and saturn uh, sorry sun ketu is uh, they are in the 10th so which means mars rahu is in the fourth so now it's like a crazy situation you have two agni tattva planets they are in the 10th they are also together and they are also aspecting mars oh my god this is like hyper aggravation of Mang manglik dosh okay so therefore you need to understand uh, in detail like you have to see the overall chart you have to see what is going on and sometimes you know you have to see where are planets like moon and venus because <clears throat> mars and sun and ketu primarily aggravate the positive traits of mars which is again a problem for marriage but on the other hand moon and venus will aggravate the negative traits of mars so for example if you are manglik and your moon is in debility and adding to that your moon uh, your mars is in a water sign oh that's like uh, the negative traits are out okay you are so fearful, so fearful, so defenseless, so helpless. You feel like that. You feel, oh, I can't maintain this marriage. You know, I am just going, you know, I'm surrendering. You, you run away, you abscond, you leave your spouse or whatever. It's like extreme negativity. Okay. And on the Sun Ketu side, you know, you are like, oh, I want divorce. What is this? You know, this spouse is not good. You know, I want a better spouse, you know, so... Yeah, so again, extreme good, extreme bad problems, okay. So along with that, you also have to check Venus, what Venus is doing in the chart. So if you are Manglik and if Venus is in prominent positions like, you know, the Kendra or Venus is in Digbal in the fourth, then there could be problems with your uh, sexuality, which means your sex desire is like out of control. Or even if, you know, Venus is in the seventh, okay. Along with the fact that you are among them. And uh, adding to that, if your Mars, Venus are somehow linked. So, for example, your Mars is in Lagna. So, you are among them, And Venus is in 7. So, now you are among them, And Venus is also in 7. And Mars is also aspecting Venus. Okay. Or Mars, Venus are conjunct in the 7th house. Classic. Okay. This is like classic combination. So then you might have tendency to enjoy with multiple uh, partners of the opposite sex, you know. And adding to, to that, if Mercury is also there, Mercury shows multiple uh, people at a one point of time, you know. So what can I say? It's like... <laughs> <clears throat> so therefore you have to check uh, to what extent is the person Mangli. Okay, and if the person is Mangli, now, if like the first case, you know, both are Mangliks. So, if both are Mangliks, they say that, okay, if two people are Manglik, they should marry. But you will see many people who are Manglik, they get married and then they're divorced. Why? Because sometimes what is happening, one person is 
Manglik with all the extreme positive traits of Mars and one person is Manglik with all the negative traits of Mars. So then it's like a nuclear explosion happening. So therefore, if if a person has like, you know, uh, extreme qualities, you know, then even if uh, like those extreme qualities, like extreme positives or extreme negatives, even if they are compensated, then it, it is very difficult. So when you say that two Mangliks will get married to each other and they can stay uh, relatively happily, it means both the both the mangliks are reasonably uh, manglik but they are not having like super duper like extreme positive or extreme negative traits you know so for example if two people have all this you know like both of them have surya in the 10th or ketu in the first you know both of them then also it's very dangerous and both of them have moon in debility or moon in eighth house Venus in the seven, even then it's very dangerous because the inherent propensity is destruction and extramarital affair. Yeah, but if somebody is having some average placements, you know, like sun is somewhere, his Mars is in the uh, second house and the girl, you know, our Mars is in the seventh, you know, Surya is somewhere and moon is also not that bad, badly placed. Then, then you, the marriage can work between two Mangliks, okay? <clears throat> And then second case, if both are uh, like uh, one is Manglik, the other one is not Manglik. So now this is very interesting because people think, oh, I am not Manglik and he is Manglik. Uh, so uh, or she is not Manglik, we will not marry, it will be ending in a divorce, right? Well, certainly not. So now imagine the, the one person is Manglik, okay? And the other person is not Manglik. So Mars is not impacting the marriage houses, but the but that person who is not Manglik still has you know Sun Ketu in very prominent positions or um, depending on what kind of Manglik you know the spouse has, this person either has Sun Ketu very prominent or Moon Venus very prominent. Then, then it means although you do not have the Martian energy, but still there is considerable water like you know Jala Tattva moon venus you know romance sexuality and all this or sun ketu which is like domination administration clarity and all this so even then you might be able to stay together of course there will there will be problems because you are at the end you are not money but because you have prominent fiery planets or prominent watery planets you will still be able to balance out that energy somehow Provided your spouse doesn't have a crazy chart. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and on top of that, if the person who is Manglik has Jupiter or ninth lord aspecting Mars, then the dosha is reduced. And on the top, if the non-Manglik has a very strong Sun Ketu or a very strong uh, Moon Venus, depending on the type of Manglik dosha the spouse has, then that can be balanced. So that is a situation where a Manglik and a non-Manglik can somehow marry. And they will have a reasonably good uh, married life, depending on the Mahadasha and Tardasha. <clears throat> now, case number three. Non-Manglik marries non-Manglik. That also can be problematic. <laughs> Why? Imagine you both are non-Manglik. But one, one of you, you have Sun, Ketu, Mars in the 10th house. Or, you know, Mars is in the 10th, Sun is in the 10th, Ketu is in the 10th or whatever. Because in 10th house, Mars is not Manglik. So that is why I am giving the example of the 10th house. And 10th house is also where Mars is in Digbala. And Surya is also in Digbala there. And on the other hand, your spouse has, you know, uh, moon in Lagna. Venus in 4th. Wow, classic. I just want love, romance and enjoyment and nothing else in life. And then the other person is, oh, I want to be the prime minister of the world, you know, or president of this universe. And then what happens? There is this disconnect, right? So basically, in short, it is a question of the fire and the water. If these two elements are present in harmony, then the marriage can work. So if you are Manglik, then your fire is either very high or the water is very high. Both 
No, so the other person, so if your fire is very high because of Mangli, it's like here, but the other person has some energy which is bringing it till here. So this can still work, okay? It's like some gap. But if your fire is here and the other person's water is here, then this cannot work, no? <laughs> right? So it actually depends on the chart. And these are some very small examples that I'm giving, you know, sun, ketu, moon, venus. But then the overall chart matters, you know, the fifth house, fifth lord, navamsha, all these things matter. So you know, please do not uh, just blindly say, oh, you're Mang Mangli, you cannot marry a normal. You have to see are the fire and water energies balanced or not? What is their compatibility in that area? What does the man want and what does the girl want? If that is what you can identify and you can see if the each other can fulfill, then fine, very good. Mangling, non-mangling, not a problem. And if they can't, then mangling, mangling problem, non-mangling, non-mangling, also problem, all right? I hope this gives you a clear perspective because you will see all the time that Manglik, Manglik, married, divorce, non-Manglik, non-Manglik, also divorce, and Manglik, non-Manglik gets married and they are having good marriage, okay? You will also find that they are divorced, but you will also find all categories, you know, Manglik, Manglik, married, very good marriage, non-Mangliks, both marrying, also very good marriage. So all the scenarios can play out. But it will depend on the balance of energies. And as an astrologer, that's your job to find out are the energies balanced, okay? All right. Thank you very much for your patience. If you are new, then please like, comment, share, and subscribe and hit the thumbs up. And for consultations, you can always go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him even if you are a monk or not. Okay, thank you.